Uh, next up is general items. Uh, status update concerning the dissolution of the city's former redevelopment agency, and I believe the next five or six is the Mr. Aaron Bush show. So you're up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council, and members of the successor agency. Uh, it's been a while since we've had to do that, but thank you for the opportunity to provide you all with an update regarding uh, the former redevelopment agency's uh, business matters. As you mentioned, uh, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the next four items, uh, all dealing with redevelopment issues. And really, um, items 16 through 18 are uh, actual business matters that will need you to take action as the city council and as the successor agency for Yuba City's uh, former redevelopment agency. Because those three actions had a lot in the way of background um, for each of those individual subjects, I hopefully try to make it simplified by presenting uh, item 15 before you tonight, which is just a, an overall summary update of the activities that have happened um, since the governor passed uh, the Dissolution Act, which eliminated redevelopment agencies throughout the state of California. So um, for item 15, I'll just give a quick overview, and then we'll move on into the other items <coughs> that require your action. So with the winding down of redevelopment, uh, as it was fondly referred to, uh, all started with the Dissolution Act, which was passed by Assembly Bill 1X26. This was uh, passed by the governor's budget in uh, June of 2011. And as you can imagine, with over 400 redevelopment agencies in the state uh, standing to lose a lot and lot of money, um, there was a lot of uh, lawsuits against that uh, particular legislation. Unfortunately for those agencies, including ours, uh, in December of 2011, the uh, California Supreme Court upheld uh, the uh, act, and as a result, all redevelopment agencies in the state were dissolved effective February 1st, 2012. Um, this right here is, is what were some of the requirements of AB uh, 26, or the Dissolution Act as it's known. And, and I'll just go through these real quickly because some of the terms in here are very important for uh, what has happened uh, with the, your redevelopment agency. And I know that some of this is old, old news for some of you because you've had the pleasure of serving on the oversight board. Council Member Dukes has been there from the start, uh, and uh, we appreciate your involvement in this. But, so I apologize for the redundancy to, to, to some of you. So AB 26 cr uh, created uh, several requirements that took effect immediately, and that was uh, the formation of successor agencies and housing successor agencies to manage the wind down of the former redevelopment agency's funds. If you recall, redevelopment had a 20% housing set aside fund that was to be used for housing matters to uh, provide affordable housing. And then the other 80% uh, was just this general fund, which we did things like the town center project with. So uh, AB 26 required successor agencies to manage the, the winding down of those funds. It also required the creation of an oversight board, which was comprised of seven different representatives from different uh, agencies that benefited from redevelopment funds. And so um, we have uh, created an oversight board to manage the uh, winding down process. Enforceable obligations is a, is a real key one that was created, and I'll get to that in a little bit more detail. Recognized obligation payment schedules, finally known as ROPs. These are basically our semi-annual um, uh, bills, if you will, what we had to pay as a redevelopment agency, what were our obligations, our enforceable obligations that we had contracts with that we had to, to um, pay. And then finally, the Redevelopment Property Tax Trust Fund. That's basically a, a consolidation of all f uh, former redevelopment monies, the 80 percent pot and the 20 percent pot into one pot um, that would be used to pay all those obligations. This is just to show you an idea of everything that we've done since the, the passage of AB 26. We have created the successor agency and the housing successor agency. You folks are the, both those boards. Uh, we did create the oversight board, which met first on March 22, 2012. Uh, and we have approved all required semi-annual ROPs. Uh, to this point, there's been a total of five. Our next one is going to be due uh, in September, October. Uh, we created new accounts for the successor agency and we have uh, suffered through or gotten through uh, multiple audits of the former redevelopment agency. Enforceable obligations. Um, real quickly, I wanted to spend some time on this because this is what um, is the deal, if you will, for the redevelopment agency. 
enforceable obligations, as it says here, includes a variety of different things, bonds, loans, legally required to be repaid. Um, and then the other one I underlined is legally binding agreements or contracts. Some key ones for the city and the former agency were the interagency startup loan between the city and the former redevelopment agency, and then the reimbursement agreement between those two agencies for the repayment of the 50% of the bond debt that was issued for the construction of the Gaucher Aquatic Park. When the redevelopment agency was active, uh, these two loans totaled um, upwards of $40 million. And so there was an obligation when redevelopment was uh, in existence for the agency to pay the city back for those agreements. Originally, we listed these on our ROPs as enforceable obligations. And going through the first two uh, ROP schedules, uh, they were approved by the Department of Finance. Unfortunately, by the third, um, the Department of Finance was uh, being told from a higher source that you're not supposed to say yes, you're supposed to say no. And so as a result, when we submitted our third ROPS, we were told, no, those are no longer enforceable obligations. So that meant that the agency was no longer allowed to pay back the city for those reimbursements. Again, that was upwards of you know, between 30, 40 million dollars. Staff took uh, those decisions and did everything we possibly could uh, with the successor agency and the city council's direction to go appeal those. But unfortunately, we were appealing Department of Finance's determination to Department of Finance. So they were judge, jury, and executioner all in one fell swoop on these things. But I guess some good news that came out of this was the trailer bill, AB 1484, which was passed uh, in June of 2012. Uh, it became effective immediately, and it gave us some new rules, uh, but it also gave us some new penalties. Uh, this right here gives you an idea, a quick overview. It, it gave the oversight boards um, and successor agencies more responsibilities to perform. There were more audits and uh, due diligence reviews. Um, but it also gave the state Department of Finance more control and more opportunity to issue penalties. So, for example, on our ROPs that were required to submit to them, uh, for every day we were late, they could fine us up to $10,000. But some of the, the benefits, if you will, if there is really such a silver lining in this whole thing, is, is that as part of that legislation, um, well, I guess the first thing, though, is the, the due diligence review. And that's basically where we had to audit ourselves for a third time and tell the state how much money we were hiding away from them. Because um, if you recall, the goal of this legislation was to take back as much money as they could from redevelopment agencies to help fill the, the, the state budget. And so we went ahead and completed those reviews and found that we had uh, nearly $2 million in surplus money of housing funds that we had to give back and just about 130000 or so in the non-housing uh, funds that we had to give back. Now, in exchange for those extortion checks, they then said that we would get a finding of completion. And so we received that in September of 2013. And what this finding of completion means is, is that we've done everything we've needed to do for the legislation that was passed. We've given them all the money that uh, they could find from us. And now we get the safe harbor provisions. And what that is, is um, very key for the next few items on the agenda tonight. First one is the ability to retain and dispose of former RDA property with the approval of a long-range property management plan, and that's the subject of item number 16 tonight. And then secondly, it also gave the uh, successor agency, acting as the former redevelopment agency, the right to repay loans and agreements between those uh, former uh, redevelopment agencies and the city. So that gets to items 17 and 18, which is the interagency loan agreement and the Gaucher Aquatic Park Agreement. Uh, I will say at this point that those loan repayments um, are expected to take a long time because you can imagine that as you look at our RPTTF fund, uh, we don't have a lot of money in there. We're one of four jurisdictions when this thing started in the state that was upside down, which is actually a good thing because that meant that we were spending money the way it was supposed to be spent on redevelopment projects and putting it to, to good use. But unfortunately, the tax increment wasn't generating enough to pay all the bills. So we're just barely skating by, and we're actually running out of a bit, bit of a deficit. Um, and so what will happen is, is that if over time we're collecting enough tax increment, 50% of that gets uh, split between the agencies and the successor agency. 
then 20 percent of that money goes back into a new housing fund that's supposed to be created and what's ever left over you can start incrementally paying yourself back so it's going to take a long time with regards to the long-range property management plan uh, just real quickly it needs to address how all properties will be disposed of and, and really we'll talk about that in more detail on item number 16. These are uh, properties, the former redevelopment properties, and I'll show you in more detail on the next item. But these are the uh, commercial properties located here in the town center. These sprinkled over here are the housing successor properties. So with that uh, quick overview of, of the redevelopment uh, wind down process, I'd be happy to answer any questions before I go on to the next item. You any know questions, I have to ask questions. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> This has been an amazing process. Uh, Aaron, men you mentioned that the Department of Finance, uh, basically, they, they learned to say no. They were a little bit more generous to begin with. And, and quite honestly, there has been no due process on this. Are there any agencies that have sued the state or in the process of suing the state or the fact that there has been no due process in this whole debacle? I've heard of a variety of different uh, success and failure stories, quite honestly, and, and they're all different. Um, we, those that had similar cases to ours uh, tried but didn't get anywhere, uh, that had existing agreements but that didn't meet the letter of the law. And we pursued, uh, with the help of you know, some lobbyist help, we pursued everything in terms of new legislation, amendments to the existing legislation, uh, and it just didn't go anywhere. And um, we talked to our legal counsel and they recommended that uh, we really didn't have an opportunity because the way the other decisions had been passed down through the courts, um, similar to ours, we didn't really have a fighting chance. Do we have an opportunity in the future that if someone is successful that we could go back at this or is it just at this point a dead issue? You know, there, there are bigger pending cases out there still about the whole you know, overall legality of, of AB 26 and so depending on the outcome of those, certainly there is an opportunity to go back and revisit that. All right. Just Thank never you. say never. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's been an interesting process and I, and I applaud you for the work that you've done you. on this project because as you mentioned, we've had to have one audit after another and and of course, Robin in finance to be able to to go through these audits to prove to the state that we weren't squirreling away money anywhere, and uh, it's been a very amazing process. So, very frustrating for you, I'm sure. But thank you for all that you've done on this. Thank you. Thank you. This is just an informational item only, so it doesn't need any action. Any other questions? If not, we'll move on.